guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Kira's finances and investments. Yep, so a little bit different today's video. And basically, it's for anyone who's interested in or thinking about investing for their children because investing is something that we do on a regular basis. Today, we're going to be talking about Kira's investments because it's something that's really important to us. We want to start early. And so that when she's 18, 20, you know, sort of built up an investment account for her, we can either pass it over to her or withdraw from it and use that money to uh, to help her with whatever, really, I yeah. suppose. Her grandpa's already given her like a bit of a starting fund to put into her savings and her investments for a rainy day, as he put it, which is really sweet. Yeah. Um, her and, grand, my grandpa, her yeah, great grandpa. Yeah, sorry, yeah, Brett's grandpa, so her great grandpa, which is amazing. Yeah, that's the best thing about it as well. Anyone who ever gives her like money for Christmas or anything like that, yeah. no matter how small it might be, it's all gonna go in there, it's gonna grow, it's gonna compound, and at the end of the day, it's gonna be worth much more than if we just spent it on toys or something like that. Exactly, because it's time in the market and not timing the market. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Now, the way that we've actually set up Kira's investment account is with a company called Trading212. Trading212 are a very well-known investment firm in the UK, but I think they're, if not worldwide, they're definitely European-wide. And um, so definitely check them out. The reason that we've done this is because, well, there are many ways that you can invest for your kids. So the first one is a junior ISA. Mm -hmm. The issues with a junior ISA are... So you can't with actually withdraw any money until your kid's 18 and they've got full control of it. So it's not really something that we wanted to... Yeah, no, it's have. fine. I mean, you set up the account in your child's name. Any money that goes in can never be taken out until your child turns 18 and then mm -hmm. they have full control of it, like you said. But the issue with that is that if you need that money on the off chance in the next 18 years, you just can't get to it. Yeah. You could see that as a pro or a con. And um, for us, we just wanted the flexibility to be able to control it a bit more um, for the next 18 years. Yeah, even though we've got no intentions of like withdrawing it anyway, we just thought it'd be good to have the option. Yeah, and also the ISA limits within children's and adults' account are slightly different. So if we don't max out on our own £20,000 ISA limit, then that allows us to invest more um, tax-free for Kira uh, in an adult account. Yeah, so I think the adult account is like twenty thousand pounds tax-free, yep. whether whereas the kids account is about four and a half thousand. I don't know, but I'm not sure, but it's a lot less. Um, the other options are a standard savings account. <laughs> Just check it in the bank, but that is the worst thing that you could do with your money. Definitely don't want to be doing that. Inflation is going to beat the you know whatever interest you get in that account. It's going to suck. So definitely, definitely don't do that. Don't be scared to open an investment account and start investing for your kids. We just wanted to set up a purely investing account, one where we can choose the stocks and shares that we buy for Kira and we can manage it. Yeah, and any of the dividends that we make on that account just goes straight back into more investments. So then just the compounding just, you know, works its magic. Yeah. The next part of this video then, what we want to do is talk you through the account, show you Kira's portfolio, what stock she's holding, and our plans for the future for her investment account. So Brett's in charge of this part of the video. He's going to be talking through um, the app that we use and how he's invested Kira's money so far. Um, I let him take the lead because he's really like the most interested in it and he's kind of in charge of the household finances. It sounds a little bit sexist, but because he loves it a lot, I just I'll let him get on with it. Okay, my phone's screen recording. I'll um, edit this into the video so that you can see my phone, you can see what we're seeing as we talk through it. So yeah. this is Kira's investment account. As you said, it's in an app called Trading212. It's currently worth £4,453. We have put £4,000 into this account. So as you can see there, it's currently up 11%, which is not bad considering that it's only been open for, when did we open it? That's when we put the first amount of money in, April. So it's doing pretty good. And in terms of, I suppose we can talk through her investments, her portfolio, and then how the app works. So basically what you've got when you come into the homepage here, well, that's the homepage. If you click on the pie down there, that shows your actual investment portfolio. So as you can see here, investments, Kira currently holds Amazon, AT&T, which is an American telecoms company, Bank of Montreal, Berkshire Hathaway, which we all know is, uh, geez, what's his name? Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's company, there you go, geez. <laughs> Coca-Cola, eBay, Ford, Meta Platforms, which is the new Facebook, Nike, and then we've got a load, or we've got Tesla, and then we've got loads of Vanguard um, options here as well. Ford and Tesla recently went up loads. Yeah, so Ford's currently up 17%. Tesla, obviously, everyone knows. Yeah. Kira's holdings in Tesla are up 80%, but she's only got 361 pounds um, within there. So the main thing I wanna talk about, though, is these Vanguard um, options down here, these three at the bottom, one, two, three. Because another option that you can do if you want to invest for your child is to open a Vanguard account. That's something that I would recommend looking into. But the only option with Van the only problem with Vanguard 
is that you're limited to Vanguard funds. So the reason that we chose Trading212 is because as well as buying ETFs, which are exchange traded funds, which means that you can invest in a group of companies, you can actually invest in individual stocks as well. So this app gives you the platform to do that. So do think about setting up a Trading212 account um, because as I said, you've got funds in here as well as individual um, stocks as well. And I think a good thing about trading two and two as well is that I think there's an insurance against your money, right? So for example, in case like the company goes bust. Yeah, I you're covered you're... for up to a certain amount, which is far more than we've got in at the minute. Yeah. I'm not sure how much it is. I think it's like five, five hundred. I don't want to say a number because I don't know, but you're insured for quite a big amount of money. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what you get when you go with a reputable company like trading two and two. Yeah. So yeah, the only thing that this app doesn't have is crypto. We are thinking about setting Kira up a crypto account on a different um, brokerage. Um, because we do want to sort of diversify her income, and not her income, but her investments. And um, so that's probably the next stage, the next thing for us. If you want to know more about that, let us know down in the comments. We can make another video when we do set up her crypto account. But back to the Trading212 app, you've got your allocation down here as well. So that shows that we've got 25% of her investments are in the Vanguard S&P 500. If you don't know what that is, that's the 500 largest companies in America, and this is a fund that tracks how well they're performing. So instead of investing individually in the 500 biggest companies in America, you invest in this one fund and you, sh you own a little bit of all of those companies. So you've got that, then Meta Platforms, Facebook, she owns 11%, and then 8% of her portfolio is Tesla. Imagine if she owned 11% of Facebook. That would be Sorry, amazing. yeah, 11% of her portfolio is Facebook. <laughs> if she had 11% of Facebook, we would not be making this video. No. We'd be on a yacht somewhere. We'd probably still make this video. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's her allocation. That is her investment portfolio. We can talk about how to actually invest, if you like, and how to use the app. So we haven't actually got any money in here to invest right now. We've only got 41 Should we transfer some money over? We could transfer some money over and show you guys how it works. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so in terms of funding the account, how you do that is you set up a bank account, you link it to your Trading212 account, which we've already done. So then you come over here to the bottom right hand side icon, you click deposit funds, and there you go. That's our bank, it's already set up. So let's just put in 100 quid for the purpose of this video to show you guys how it works. Click next, you'll be redirected to Revolut. Revolut's the bank that we're using. Open Revolut. Uh, Authorize 100 pounds, authorize, deposit complete. There you go. See how Very easy quick. is that? So if you click back on there, you'll see that the free funds now are 100 pounds. So let's show you guys how to invest. Um, in this the isn't, app. In the app, yeah. <laughs> this isn't something that we plan to do, so I'm not sure what we're gonna buy, but we'll show you guys how it works. So if you click on the, uh, the search, what's that? Uh, magnifying glass down there. Search you're coming button. to the stock. So as I said, you've got individual stocks up here, and if you see there as well, you've got ETFs, which we spoke about before, which are the funds. So funds are a really good thing to invest in if you're not too sure what you want to buy because they're more diversified. You've got the most popular there, so trading two on two, split them into like different categories for you. Um, real estate, you've got there, you've got commodity funds, which are finance obviously, but um, I don't really want to invest in an ETF. Let's have a look back into stocks. So, Autodesk. Autodesk is a company that I've been thinking about investing in for a while. They're doing very well at the moment. So yeah, just for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to talk about them very much, but I'm just going to show you guys how to invest in them. So, the market's closed. Ah, uh, the market is closed. doesn't matter. What we can do is click buy. Value. Let's just buy £100 worth, because that's how, 141 because that's how much we've got in our account. Review order. This is obviously the, this is the simple way to do it. This is a market order, which means that you're buying it at that, you're buying that amount of the share versus buying a share when it hits a certain price, which is what a limit order or a stop order are. So you've got different options depending on how in depth you want to get. But for this video, you know, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it as a market order. So we've got market order there, 140, 100 pounds, 41 pence, review order. And what's going to happen is you send the buy order now, click, and there you go, it's pending. So when the market opens, this is on the US market. So it's going to open, we're currently in Singapore in like 12 hours or whatever. So when the market, six hours? I'm not sure. So when the market does open, um, that transaction will go through. Whatever the price of the stock is, we're going to buy 141, 100 pounds and 41 pence of it. So, Which at the moment is worth 0 0.41 or something. Is it? Share. Yeah, that's what did it say that, did it? Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's the other beauty about this app as well. And this is not a sponsored video in any way, um, is that you can buy fractional shares. You've got fractional shares, all right? I know what a fractional share is. Come on, share. 
Basically, <laughs> you don't have to buy one whole share of a company that you're wanting to invest in. For example, like one Tesla share is like a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much it is. I don't know what they're trading for a minute, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can buy like half a share or even 0 0.1 of a share. Um, so you can kind of get like dip your toes into the stock market without kind of committing everything you have. Perhaps. Yeah, like an Amazon stock is worth thousands. And a lot of people obviously want to get into these big blue chip stocks. Um, but then they see the price of a stock and it's like, oh, I can't afford to do that. But with these apps, you can. You can buy as little as $1 in Amazon, in Apple, in any of these companies, which is amazing. Yeah. And it allows you to diversify and buy into lots of different funds as well. So yeah, that's it really. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Feels like we rushed through this a little bit, but if you've got any questions, let us know down in the comments. We'd definitely be more than happy to answer them for you. And yeah, as I said, we're probably gonna make a video on a crypto exchange, which we're gonna be setting up for Kira soon as well. Um, but other we'll than that, we'll probably do a finance, like family finance video as well, like how we manage our finances together as a couple. That's probably, yeah, I don't fun. know. Yeah. People don't really like talking about their money, but we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting to share. I always like to see how other people are managing their finances. And like, for example, when we got married, we set up a joint account and every penny we've earned since um, getting married has gone into yeah. the same account. So we're a completely open book with each other in terms of yeah. finances. Whereas like some people would warn us like, no, you should always have a separate account each and you know, like protect yourself and all mm. that. It's protect just... yourself, but potentially not protecting your marriage, I think. Clearly yeah, way. so it's a, it's a tricky one, but, and that's what makes it such an interesting topic, I suppose. Yeah. So yeah, we'll definitely go into that. Um, I think one thing to say about Kira's investment account is that we're gonna try and put like a small amount in regularly um, and kind of like over the years because it's all about like dollar cost averaging and kind of getting all the time in the market as much as possible. Yeah, definitely. So a couple of hundred pounds every couple of months or every month, sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, just putting it in there regularly, whether the market's up at the minute or down, we don't care. We dollar cost average, which means that you put the same amount of money in at regular intervals. So you don't have to be scared that the market's up and it might crash tomorrow because you're putting it in every single month. And that way you sort of like, yeah, again, like reduce the risk basically. Yeah, and I think there have been studies done that show like actually that the accounts, the investment accounts with the least amount of activity and they tend to make the most amount of money from their investments, which yeah. is crazy. Don't be scared, don't sell, only invest what you can and set up a child's investment account and it'll be good for you and it'll be good for your kids when they get older. Yeah, and I think it would have been good if we started investing way earlier, like back in our uni days. Yeah, I wish we did. Yeah, but I wish we did. There we go, that's a different topic entirely. You live and you learn. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Hope Thanks you enjoyed the video. Watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. Why must you peace out like that? <laughs>